this video, we're talking about the 24 to 105 focal length. If you keep asking yourself, do I get a prime lens? Do I get a zoom lens? Do I get a wide angle or do I get a telephoto lens? Do I need f2.8 or should I get an f4 version? The answer is the 24 to 105 lens is the best focal range to start with no matter what camera you're using. Sure, all those beautiful 1.2s and 1.4s and f2.8s, they look great on paper, but for the price, best bit bang for your buck right here. Every camera manufacturer has some version of this focal length and it would be, in my opinion, a great jumping off point. The 24 to 105 focal range is probably the most used focal range for my project specifically. I have at points in my career so far and on many jobs only had this lens with me. It's because of how versatile this range is. At 24 millimeter, you get wide enough for landscapes and even architecture. And all the way at 105 millimeters, you still get a good focal length for compressing those images. But you also have every focal length in between the 35, 50, 85, granted they're all at f4, but still you're really able to cover all your bases. And in fact, if I were only to have one lens to bring on a project, if it was just a space or weight savings thing, I'd be bringing the 24 to 105. So let's go over why this focal length will be best for you, no matter what camera brand you're using. First, let's talk about the sharpness. These lenses are pretty darn sharp. But I would have to say you for sure want to find out what aperture your lens is sharpest at. For instance, the Sony version isn't really its sharpest until f7.1. And that could be a downside to this lens for you specifically. This lens is for sure going to be sharp enough to be able to keep up with the higher resolution and higher megapixel sensors of today. Next up, we have image stabilization. Most zoom lenses don't have it, and you'll be hard pressed to find a prime lens with stabilization built in. If you have an older style body that doesn't have in-body stabilization, you're still gonna get the benefit of having it with most of the 24 to 105 lenses out there. Like if you're using a cinema camera without stabilization, then you will gain that with a 24 to 105. The stabilization is gonna help, but if you have some of the newer mirrorless bodies that have the sensor stabilization built in, you will get a more robust stabilized look. You can almost get away with not using a tripod and close to not having to use a gimbal, but it still works great with the gimbal also. All right, next up we have weather sealing. One of the other great features is the weather sealing on these lenses. The 24 to 105 lens for all the manufacturers are considered a professional lens. And with that, you get weather and dust sealing gaskets on these guys that don't allow you know, dust or moisture into the camera body or the lens itself. I do highly recommend not letting your camera get soaked as things have been known to fail from time to time and you could end up with a dead body. Camera body, not a dead body, that'd be scary. Next up, is it parfocal? None of these lenses advertise they are parfocal, but if you are using these lenses in autofocus, you should not see any adjustment as you go through the zoom range. If you're crash zooming into a subject, sure, it's most likely, it, it won't, it most likely, sorry, I can't talk. It most likely, you know, won't be able to keep up with that. Your aperture is not going to change, so you're not going to have a lot of light loss, and you're not going to see those aperture blades start to step down as you zoom in, like you might find on a cheaper lens or a, or a variable aperture lens. So the fact that it's constant f4 or whatever aperture you're at throughout the zoom range, it almost acts as parfocal, just as long as you kind of creep it, creep it into it. And that brings us into the max aperture. At f4, it isn't the fastest lens by any means. Uh, we don't have an f2.8 version in this focal length yet. Someday, maybe we'll see. But with the fact that these cameras perform so well in higher ISO situations, I think f4 is all you need in today's world. Sure, is an f2.8 lens nice? Yes, yes, of course it is. Most of the time, I am shooting this lens at around f7.1 to f14 to keep my subject in focus. Saving shooting at f4 for when I really need that low light or want to separate my subject from the background more. You just get a t you, you really do get a ton of compression at 105 millimeters at f4. So to wrap this video up, the 24 to 105, in my opinion, is the underdog MVP of professional lenses. It's just such a versatile lens. And this is why I recommend it for most people out there, for their first lens or even a lens in their bag. There are for sure instances that this lens isn't going to be what you need, but I think those are few and far between. They just really are amazing lenses. So with that said, I hope you guys got something from this. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.
Thank you for watching. Cheers.